One mile in fog patches and showers early Friday, but improving to greater than six miles on Friday morning. Stars right Hi there, it's um, Stuart here from Astro Dwarf Adventures. Uh, as I said in the last video, the biggest adventure has been trying to find a clear sky. Now, last night, um, there was a clear sky. Um, for the first time, it was 3 o'clock in the morning. I actually woke up um, and just had a happen to look at the window and saw clear skies. Um, almost in a panic, I was like, ah, clear skies, and ran downstairs, um, threw a pair of joggers and ran downstairs, grabbed the dwarf too, and headed out. Had to be to the front garden, unfortunately. The back was still a bit cloudy. So the front garden, unfortunately, the street lights were right across the road, uh, obviously, which is going to be bad for light pollution. But it was my first chance, literally since I've had this thing, to use the astro photography mode. I'd got a boat in the water and I'd got the moon, but they were just video. Um, I got the moon for like 60 seconds. Um, I had to drive in the Scottish borders for that. We've literally had three weeks, three, three and a half weeks of fog and, and just you know perpetual cloud cover so i saw a gap and i took it um so in saying that i had made a few mistakes when i first set up although i watched videos you know i knew how to basically set up forgot about the focusing so i couldn't work out why the calibration wouldn't work it just would not calibrate um so uh, i was like why the hell is this thing not calibrating um and I realised I couldn't even see the stars. That's when I suddenly twigged I hadn't focused. So I did the autofocus. I was a bit um, confused by the autofocus. It'd go right through the nice pinpoint of the stars, past it, and then leave me with these big sort of diffuse um, spheres. I had to use the manual focus then to come back into um, actual pinpoint focus, as best as I could at least. Um, so I don't know if it's just because of the amount of light pollution. It could certainly be because I was right opposite a street light, two street lights, as I said. Um, so I'll, I'll obviously try and get to much darker skies and check that out and see if I can. Um, you know, hopefully the autofocus is going to work fine. Um, right, so in saying that then, let's have a look at this... Um, this short video here um, as I took this um, last night. Um, so I managed to get the focus sorted out. I was able to then go to and slew around to the Andromeda galaxy. And just for a quick test, I just did, um, I think it was exposure six seconds. Uh, gain was just down at 60. Um, and I just did 99 exposures um, to try and... Um, you know, just test out this mode because I hadn't even had a chance to use it yet. Um, I had, you know, you can only use Astro. You need something to be able to calibrate to, um, you know, see stars. And of course, I, I couldn't ha didn't have that. So this was me just kind of playing with it. And, you know, Andromeda Galaxy is obviously a nice, big, easy target to try and get onto straight away. So I did that. Uh, as I, I can only see it from the front garden, hence the pollution. I thought about it again. I was half asleep. If I'd thought about it, um, I could have. Um, I've got a light pollution filter, one point two five inch light pollution filter, um, and I could have put that on. Um, but again, just didn't think about it. So I'll try and get the dark, darker skies for the next one, uh, and use that light pollution filter. So you see, there's a lot of hot pixels here in the image. Um, the reds and greens and blues. This is me trying to muck about with the light curves badly, as you see. I was just trying to darken the image up and, and highlight the, the galaxy as it starts to stack. Um, I did speed up the, the video here, just so you're not sitting waiting for 20 minutes for the stack to finish. You see it's going a lot faster. Um, so, yeah, this... Um, you do actually start to see, obviously, you see the, the the nucleus of the galaxy. You do start to see some of the luminosity of the uh, galaxy arms come through the actual stars of the galaxy. Uh, although, obviously, with all the noise, um, you're not getting a lot of that in this. I will be doing post-processing uh, of the images using Affinity Photo. Um, learning that as a process as well. So, obviously, trying to get to grips with that. Um, and I'll do my best. I might even do a video was I get a proficient at showing you how I do the post-processing to reduce noise and actually bring out the photons that have been captured uh, in this raw mode, um, you know, and how I stack the images and all that sort of stuff, then how I post whatever filters I might use to denoise the image, etc. Um, and obviously playing with the light curves, as you see there, I was trying to play with the light curves um, and the stretch to try and get the, the highest sort of contrast between the dark sky and the actual image I'm taking. You can actually start to see now where you know, eight to six uh, images stacked. You're just starting to see the luminosity of the actual disk it's, itself on the Andromeda Galaxy. Um, again, I'm sure it'll be better once I denoise 
um, and get better contrast between the background and the image. Um, but as a first attempt, I don't think it's too bad. As I really don't care if it's horrible. You know, I'm sure there's guys out there been using this and other telescopes like this for ages and you know are much more proficient than me i was happy I, you know first time i've captured andromeda galaxy uh, ever um um you know this is really my first foray into astrophotography and obviously using the dwarf 2 and using this software you can actually see obviously all the hot pixels uh, i'll need to i'll need to find out the best way to get rid of the hot, hot pixels. Dark frames, if I take dark frames, which I didn't do, um, obviously for the correct exposure and gain settings, etc. I, I believe that helps you get rid of those hot pixels. So that's obviously something I'll try next. Um, but yeah, I mean, you can just make out the, um, obviously the luminosity of the disc just starting to show. The nucleus is obviously um, probably overexposed. Um, but, you know, I will try... You know, I've got 99 images there. I'll maybe exclude the ones to start with. I've got a bit of cloud coming over. Um, and then see if I can improve upon this with post-processing. Um, just, you know, pulling out the photons are there, reducing noise and, and see what I can do. And as once I get proficient at that, I'll actually do a few videos on post-processing using Affinity uh, Photo as well. And any filters I use to help obviously give me a better quality image from the raw data itself. So there you go. I'm, I'm still so excited I managed to get... It working, I know that Astro Dwarf works fine. I know Astro Mode works fine. I said we're playing with Astro Darks in the next one as well. Hopefully, perhaps using that filter, um, and um, you know, hopefully get a much nicer image to see just on the phone here. So less hot pixels, etc. Better contrast, but maybe better use of the stretch, um, and. Um, you know, if I just get a better image because I've got darker skies, longer exposures, um, and obviously stacking a decent number, good two, three, four, five hundred images, whatever, um, to really obviously reduce noise and get a better, uh, you know, image to noise ratio. Uh, but there, as, as a start, I'm really, really happy with that. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'll obviously be trying to bring you quality content as the skies allow. Hopefully we'll start getting some clearer skies. And as I said, I'm happy to drive to darker skies. I've even got a little caravan I picked up. Cheap. Uh, I've been doing that up. And I'm actually going to be like going out maybe on a, a Saturday night, driving to some remote location in the middle of nowhere um, and spending a night trying to do some decent astrophotography. Um, and obviously that should give me a lot more content to give to you guys as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please don't forget to uh, like and subscribe. That would be fantastic uh, just to help me grow this channel. And hopefully, you know, people and comment as well. Uh, I'd love to hear your comments. Are you are you trying astrophotography for the first time? Do you have a Dwarf 2 telescope? That would be great to know. Maybe you could try and start building up a Dwarf 2 uh, community. Um, that would be fantastic. We could share images and data. Um, I'll make. I'll be making. You know, once once I've got something of quality to to share, I'll be sharing all the raw images for use to stack or the or or even um, post stacked image uh, still raw that you could then perhaps post process yourself, etc. So I'll be trying to do all that and obviously just try to build up this community and and just share the joy of of the dwarf two and astral photography with whoever is interested. So as I said, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'll make as many as I can can as the skies allow um, and I'll try and get to some really really nice dark Bortle 2 skies that fortunately there are barely over an hour an hour and a half drive from here but, um, right with that being said then I um, hope you've enjoyed this video it's nearly 10 minutes so I'll cut that down now as you can see there's the final image at the moment take care guys um, I'll catch you in the next video thanks for watching and if you could like and subscribe very very much appreciated um, and um, yeah just remember look up occasionally you don't know what you're going to see Take care. Bye. Oh, one mile in fog patches and showers early Friday, but improving to greater than six miles on Friday morning. Stars shine bright.